G'day there folks, I'm Beanie, and welcome to Beanie Draws. This is the next stage process of me drawing the Allosaurus head. It's going to be changing quite a bit from what I originally drawn, because um, as you can see here, I've basically done that and kept it from the scales, but there are so many ways of drawing Allosaurus, so I'm just going to try and make it look a little bit more like some of the drawings that I've seen, which may require me doing a little bit of erasing and fixing up a little bit, but mostly this tutorial, if it ends up being a tutorial, it's going to be me kind of covering doing the scales. I don't know if I'm going to be doing it in pencil or in pen, I guess we'll see. But before I start off, I just wanted to do a big shout out. Well, there's so many shout outs I really should be doing on this channel because there's so many of you guys who've been, you know, commenting, leaving suggestions, leaving praise. It, all that stuff always makes me feel brilliant to read, so thank you, and if I haven't responded to you right away, I will eventually. But I just wanted to say a big thank you to user Ultra Prime. Now, I couldn't actually respond to you directly because I don't have any reply button. That's apparently some problem with YouTube or something, but I did read your um, suggestion on using Handbrake, and i got to say it has made a huge difference um, especially for some of the new videos that I'm uploading. I'm doing a a long, long, long drawing of um, Velociraptors running with Chris Pratt on the motorcycle. That video is, I think, in about four parts now. Each part goes for about 40 minutes. Each video before I was using Handbrake was up to like 2 gigabyte, which that just takes a long time to upload. And um, yeah, using Handbrake has managed to get those 2 gigabyte files down to about 700 megabyte files and in back in the day 700 megabyte files were what my five minute videos were so that should help a lot in my uploading uh, process so Ultra Prime, big ups, thank you very much for that suggestion that has helped me significantly so now let's get to drawing shall we um right so I'm basically, again, I'm using, um, what, I'm using some things I've seen of, um, of, uh, skeletons and such. Um, I'm trying to do a bit of a skeletal structure, uh, not skeletal structure, I'm trying to use the skin and the scales from the skeletons, but also using a little bit from what I've seen in, um, other paleo art. Um, don't worry, this video, you've probably already seen, I've got another video of me drawing the Allosaurus head. I've scanned this, so, you know, I wanted to take this drawing to the next stage. Um, now this eye, I did draw it incredibly roughly and quickly, so, oh, I just knocked the camera. So I'm going to actually erase this eye completely and start from scratch, because I didn't like how it looked. I mainly kept it in for, um, for example purposes. You may see a very hint of previous um, Allosaurus eye, but let's see if I can make this eye look a little bit more realistic. Probably again making it smaller as well. This video isn't intended to be a how to draw tutorial, but because I wanted to fix some things up, because I wasn't fully happy with how this dinosaur was looking, I'm going to use the beginning stage as a method of fixing up some of the things that were kind of uh, not making me like the drawing so much. I do have an Allosaurus full body video that I've recorded, but I don't fully like how it looked. I may still upload it, but um, I may do it again just for the sake of, you know, being happy with my own artwork. But, um... Yeah, so I'm just going to fix up the eye. I already like this eye a lot better now. I'm going to be scaling that soon. But I'm also going to erase some of this part, because there's no hole there. And in some some of the um, paleo art I've seen, the Allosaurus um, bony ridges up here are a lot sharper. Some of the skulls I've seen, they're um, more rounded. So I'm basically, I guess with um, with skulls and dinosaurs, 
they dinosaurs are probably a lot like you know humans and such we all have different shaped skulls and different shaped heads which make us all look different you know dogs and elephants and all different kinds of creatures all have varying differences that make them look slightly different to each other and that is probably the same with the the um this part um again i don't know if i'm gonna actually go into this with um pen but i want to um render it now um i'm giving it a lined stroke style to kind of give it a bit of a bony vibe as opposed to just rendering it flat out Um, and around here, I'm thinking what I'm going to do is a little bit of a Velociraptor style rendering that I've done in previous videos. Around here, I think I'm going to do some kind of lip, um, lip scaling, kind of a bit like how I did the Carnotaurus. I'm pretty sure I've uploaded the Carnotaurus. I well, yeah, because I've seen the um the preview in when I was doing some video commenting but um just going to do some lines along the lip so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put in some um how i start my sort of scale drawings is i i loosely put in some lines here and there i mean you've you've seen my other drawing tutorials but this time i'm not i'm not scaling it like you know there's no Allosaurus in any of the Jurassic Park movies, so I'm basically just going from my head and what I've seen some other paleo artists do and seeing if I can do something kind of cool like that. So I'm roughing in some lines here and there, like wrinkles, wrinkles around the mouth, and they can kind of start the formation of where scales will start. And I know that in some of my other videos, people have complained that, you know, I go a bit too fast. Um, some of them, some of my drawings are actually, you know, weren't even intended to be tutorials. Some of them were just time lapse, but I may do them again um, as actual tutorials. But for now, this is kind of, I don't know, partially tutorial, partially just watching me as I work it along. But these lines I'm doing here, if you can see them, I'm just roughly putting in some lines just to kind of where I where I would guess like organic natural wrinkles would form. And then you can kind of once you've got into that, that's where you um you kind of form the textures of the skin and the um the scales like around here. We have a dermal thing, so we probably have some scales. Um, going around that dermal thing, um, scale, give it a little bit of a render right away, so I'm giving it sh shading just to make it look a little bit more three-dimensional, um, now I don't think I'm going to have the skin to, um, around here when I do it fully, it's probably going to be a little more circular scales like this, so when I get to actually drawing that part that bit's all going to be time-lapsed um, a lot of this video is probably going to be time-lapsed in the end but I'm just kind of explaining parts where I can so I've got a shading bit on that scale to make it look a little more 3d you only sort of render one side and um, I don't know if you've ever looked at really closely at your fingernail or you know if you've looked at a elephant tusk or a rhinoceros um, horn, you'll notice that um, that they have sort of like these gridded lines along them, if you can even see what I've just done there, just little faint lines to indicate texture. AID Podcast has just uploaded another thing onto Instagram, oh yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do a little bit of a shout out, um, if you're interested in design and illustration M more so design than il like they do f a lot of focus on the illustration as design but check out adventures in design um also known as aid podcast um 
basically what you want to do now is go into adventures in design pod adventures in design market.com i think it is now i'll probably put a link or something in there it's if you're interested in like you know um poster art screen printing that kind of stuff definitely give them a, a check out and actually if you want to do me a, a bit of a, a bit of a favor shout out thing if you get really into that podcast let them know that beanie sent you because you know it'd be a, bit, a little bit cool because you know they um they've helped me a lot in the past of you know entertainment and feeling part of the community so you know if i can get other people to sign up to them it might look good for me <laughs> it's always good you know scratch scratching their back then i scratch their back and then you guys scratch my back we can all scratch each other's backs especially if i've got an itchy back i've got an itchy shoulder at the moment <laughs> um but yeah check them out they're awesome um if you're a kid though uh it might not be appropriate for you because they do swear a lot so um it's probably more focused towards the adults but you know if you're allowed to listen to the odd swearing and lots of politically incorrect humor then go right for it i'm actually a little bit intimidated by because what i'm trying to do here is i'm trying to render the, the scales kind of like that baby t-rex that i did but i don't think it's going to work um there's actually a rendering style that I really want to try, but I don't think I'm going to be able to work it out on this one. Yeah, maybe I'll just stick to round circles. <laughs> um, I can do a combination of round circles, actually. I'll do like some of these wrinkled um, zigzag line scaling. If it doesn't work, I'll erase it and start again. But around here, I'm probably going to go with the rounded um, circle scales. Like, I've seen a lot of, you know, um, a lot of um, sort of illustrators from the 90s, before Jurassic Park came out, and we were all starting to draw in Jurassic Park style. <laughs> Another interesting fact that I found out through my analytics on my YouTube page is I was always thinking that people would be, you know, more interested in the time lapse videos than the 40 minute long videos but no like recently my um my time lapse drawings have only received like a quarter of the views that my um my full length videos get so you guys really do actually seem interested in the full process which i find heartwarming and also a bit surprising because you know I'm surprised people want to actually watch the full video of me gas bagging as I draw, but obviously some of you do. And I'm building up the um, rendering, as you can see here, just building it up. I'm doing it kind of line by line, almost as if I'm drawing it with a um, a uh, um, pen. Looks like I'll probably will be drawing this in um, pencil. I really should be covering this side of it with my with a page, so I'm not smudging my pencil marks. But you know, I'm an artist. I work the way I do, and then I just work with the consequences after of having smudged lines. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to have this eye darker. Might also do a preview of this one for Instagram and see if I can actually get this drawing done by next week so that this can be my next um, tutorial video. Because I kind of, for videos like this, I kind of like having the um, how to draw part and the more detailed rendering style like the same day or the day after. I'm not doing that with the kind of Taurus drawing that I've just uploaded, because, um, well, the, the head was good, the body was okay, but I, I didn't want to go too far with the body. So with this one, I am, um, yeah, 
I'm going I'm going to town with the detail. See how we go. This may be a long video. If it is, I'm going to just um do the old editing thing. What I'm doing here is I'm using very light circles because I don't want it to be too um I want it to be kind of fleshy skin as opposed to rough skin so like around here it might be rougher skin oh focus just went out there there we go around here I'm gonna have like sort of the rougher scales so I do them like you know big and chunky around here do them tiny and fleshy around here you do them angular and squarish and then you just kind of evolve, like use your different lines to evolve the different kind of scales and textures. So like in here, it's probably going to be like in here and in here, sort of fleshy scales. And I also, um, modif especially with pencil, I modify the pressure of the pencil so some of these scales are going to be very light. Some of them are going to be darker, and then I just kind of adjust between the two to get different kinds of um, scaling. Also, I'm going to do another shout-out, because I know this video seems to be <laughs> a half shout-out, half just drawing. Well, when I'm you know trying to teach scaling, um, I don't know. This is just how I do scaling, but there's a YouTuber called Dinosaur Drawer. I think his, his um, YouTube channel is basically just for drawing dinosaurs. The way that he does scales is amazing. Like, I'm just going to put that out there. His scales are really awesome. Different, different style to how I do mine. His, um, his scales, to me, they look more like they're... Um, there's this kind of a a sculptured artwork style that I've seen some illustrators do. Like, when I say illustrators, I'm not talking about drawing, I'm talking about actual sculpted, sculpting illustrators. Like, they can make 3D sculptured illustrations. And they're quite, quite, quite surreal and interesting, but the way that he draws his scales looks like they're coming out of the page. Like, he spends a lot of time on those scales, and damn, are they impressive. So yeah, check out um, Dinosaur Draw. I'm pretty sure I got the um, the name right. Um, I'll try to remember to link it. But if I don't, I'm sure he, he, if he's um, checking out this video, um, he used to comment a lot in my first um, early days of drawings. But yeah, check out his videos as well. He's got some really cool tutorials there. And it's also really cool, like other people have said that, you know, they're going to start doing some tutorial drawings is always awesome to read that I'm inspiring people like if I haven't responded to anything that you've commented on I will have probably read it though I get a lot of comments now so not that I'm tooting my own horn just more that if I haven't responded to you right away it's because I'm getting a lot of comments now which is awesome I love it thank you everybody What I'm basically doing is just like using little lines to build up texture and um I've noticed when I look at um I think I've commented on this in another video. I don't know if it's uploaded or not, but you'll you'll hear it if you've seen all my videos at some point. That um when I look at the Stan Winston um models for the original Jurassic Park, for, when I studied their um scales, I know sometimes it's like, you know, they'll have like little little wrinkles like this. That, that they have in the sculpture, and then they just put the little scales in those wrinkles, and those wrinkle lines kind of form a nice, interesting, um, organic um, direction for the scales. So that's that's just something that I noticed. Um, they didn't teach anything like that. It's just kind of something I observed over time that. They seem to have a bit of a pattern that they um they start with the lines and then 
they draw the scales in those lines, and that's kind of how you get a nice, interesting, organic flow for your scales. If you want it slightly more planned and less, less, you know, random, but in a random, organic manner, if that makes any sense. What I'm going to have to do now is use an envelope, so I can st uh, stop smudging my lines, because I... You're really meant to start from left to right with any drawing in that, but I, I seem to like going from right to left. I'm an artist, I don't follow the rules. <laughs> Even though, you know, rules help form the foundation. You have to know the rules to break the rules. So you're meant to start from left to right, but I'm doing it the other way around, just because that's how I find it comfortable. And I did notice in another comment that someone was suggesting for me to use this other Pentel pencil. Like, technically this pencil is the same as this pencil, it's just this one is a, is a 7mm. I think it, if you can, I think you can see that it says Pentel 120A3 DIX or something like that. I can't actually read it. I need to get glasses. <laughs> But um, basically, this is a, a 0.5 millimeter lead mechanical pencil made by Pentel. I'm pretty sure, and it's literally my favorite pencil to draw with. It's like super precise. Um, Dinosaur Drawer's latest video, he was talking about how he doesn't really draw with mechanical pencil. He finds them too um too precise and he's more into more interested in like the um the old school um wooden pencils but i have a feeling that his watching my mechanical pencil drawings may have inspired him to get a mechanical pencil i know i've got a lot of comments from you guys you know for example you guys have been getting this pen the ballpoint the four pen which is awesome it's good to see that you know people try in different mediums but yeah, this is a Pentel. I can just see. Hang on, I'm gonna try and adjust this. Let's see. Different lighting. Let's see. You can just see in there somewhere. I think it's got the um, Pentel A. 315, I think it says. Um, it says DX. I can't read what's in that part because it's all blurred away, but it's definitely a Pentel. Something or other. DX 1.5 millimeter. Basically, look for this shape of barrel. Um, the, the thing at the end will be grey. Look for that particular grip, and I mean, you might you might find a different kind of mechanical pencil more suited to your needs. But I just find this grip so comfortable. I can draw with this grip for ages. It did originally actually come with one of these, so it will look more like this, but in grey. I accidentally ripped this off back when I was using this a lot, but um, I actually found that 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 thing kind of got in the way when I was drawing. So having that ripped off, it's actually kind of been beneficial in a, in, a, in a way. So like this pencil just feels so comfortable in my hand. It feels like, you know, an extension of my hand, just like, you know, the four pen feels like an extension of my hand. Just makes drawing so much quicker and feels so organic. And that's basically, like, you might over time get used to a pencil that's, you know, that makes you feel very comfortable. And some pencils I've just found really uncomfortable, like, the one that someone suggested, I, I've tried it and I, I just don't like it because it feels too heavy and, and metal in my hand. This pencil is all plastic, and it just, it's super light. I think I've commented in another video that, um, it feels like I'm just, it feels like I'm drawing with that part, that very, very, very fine tip, as opposed to drawing with the actual pencil itself. But yeah, you know, it's just, I know that people have gone in the past asked, you know, what pencil I'm using, what pen I'm using, so if, if you're watching 
these videos and you don't read my descriptions, I don't I actually don't really put any um, comment on what what I use in my descriptions. So um, probably should do that. But um, yeah, I just I use this particular mechanical pencil. Anytime you see um, me drawing with this, that's what I'm using. Now I'm thinking of, um, I'm debating whether that I have this nose ridge going down to here or going, um, because I kind of like how, the, in some of the skeletons I've seen, the nose, the, um, the ridge of the skull goes like there and there's this bony ridge there, but I've seen so many people draw the bony ridge going up to here, so I don't know if I'm going to keep the bony ridge going there like I've seen with all other dinosaurs, if I'm just going to be different and doing it to here, I know that I'll probably get a lot of comments going, no, oh, the bony ridge doesn't go there, it goes up along the nose, but I'm just doing from what I'm seeing in actual, um, in these skeletons and just kind of imagining where I think, you know, bone and ridges and skin wrinkles and that might fall. And also some like some snouts of Allosaurus look rounded, some of them look pointed. So I'm just gonna put some um, scales around the nostril. I'm doing these scales very much like a T-Rex from Jurassic Park. And I can imagine that um that Allosaurus would have more sort of rounded scales around the snout. Possibly it might have some of these, you know, um, the scales that kind of, you know, you see at the, on the Velociraptor and the T-Rex mouth, but I can't fully, it, it might have a little bit of that, but I don't fully imagine it's going to be fully that kind of styled scale. I'm just drawing these how I just naturally, organically feel they should be, and then letting my hand do the rest. Also, once I've drawn some of the main scales, then I'll darken in some of the lines and work in some, you know, darker details, and then occasionally render in some of those scales a little bit darker. Letting the the, um, the scales and my hand and the pencil dictate where I think extra bits should go. So it seems like I'm drawing these scales to look like they're um, kind of morphing into the ridge. So they they ridge out and they kind of scatter, kind of like T-Rex. Well, when you think about it, the um, the Allosaurus is somewhat similar and related in a way to the T-Rex. It has a it's similar in a lot of regards. And um except for you know it's got more digits. But you know it's got the sort of a ridgy plate on its head. It's got the long sort of powerful snout. It's not as big but um it's got similarities. Now, am I going to make this point here? I don't know. It seems like it doesn't have as big of a nose ridge up here as I initially thought. So I'm just going to erase these bits for now and just kind of work out how I think it should kind of go. I might do a double bit of a nose ridge Because it seems in some skeletons, it's got a bit of a rough um, part of bone around here. And because of the length of this video, I'm now just going to try and rush through the rest of these scales and then hopefully you can sort of figure out what I've done. Like I said, a lot a lot of this scaling tutorial isn't meant to be a tutorial strictly. It's more of a um you watch how I do it 
and then you can kind of get an idea for how to do your own scales. Because especially with this one, this isn't like, you know, the scales aren't strictly um, meant to be with, like, the lines for the actual head is more um, spe specified on how you should be doing it, but scale-wise, you know, just do what you feel is, is you know, best placement. Like, I feel there should be, you know, hard ridged scales over its eyes and around here fleshy sort of circles but you, you don't have to you know know exactly where each particular scale should go just do what you feel is you know natural i will say around here um the reason why i'm doing darker lines is because i find that to be a good way to sort of render in shapes of the skull without it's a, it's a different form of rendering that I, that I try every now and then sometimes it works like it's, without actually shading i just use lines to actually and i emphasize a bit of the shape of the inner skull that you guys can try if you want so along here it seems like i'm going to be doing similar to the velociraptors in the first jurassic park movie and Jurassic Park 3. And also around here is where it's, you know, the dinosaur would have kind of baggy skin because the jaw would be opening and closing when it eats, and when it eats its chunks of meat, it'd go down through this part of the neck, so this part of the neck would be very flexible. So I think of it kind of more like a, um, I guess a crocodile. Do sort of wrinkly sort of skin. Whereas around here, it's a very solid jawbone structure, so it'd be, you know, kind of like a solid jawbone. And I suppose I, I'll be doing a different video down the track, but you could put feathers through here if you want. I won't stop you. And since I want to draw, I I want to draw some of my dinosaurs. Most of my dinosaurs, the old school way, because I grew up on old school dinosaurs where it's you know, dinosaurs had no feathers and they were considered big blundering lizards. <laughs> but I do have a plan on doing a Velociraptor in two different styles. I'm going to be doing a Velociraptor in a sort of a serious style, feathered, trying to make it look quite scary and vicious kind of like a um kind of like an eagle or a um there's a there's an australian bird no not the emu although you know that can be dangerous but there's an australian bird called the cassowary or the cassowary or something um cassowary is how i pronounce it but um it has really big claws which are very dangerous and it it goes you know it jumps and kicks Apparently, even emus jump and kick um, when they want to attack predators and humans. But I kind of imagine that something like that, with big eagle wings, would be kind of terrifying for, you know, imagining that the... Let, let's, let's just imagine that the velociraptors are the size of humans. We'll call them Utahraptors or Dinochuses, because, you know, they were the actual, more the size of humans. Velociraptor was the size of a dog, and I just, you know, they're scary, I guess, but I, pref I prefer the size of a human, and then adding feathers just to add that extra bit of ter terrifying factor. Because some people are terrified and scared of birds, so imagine a Velociraptor bird kind of thing. That could be kind of scary. But I'm also going to be doing a, um, a bird, um, <laughs> I'm going to be very cheeky, there's a little bit of a, um, I'm, I'm going to do like two different versions, um, I'm going to be doing a, this is, this is just a preview of what I'm going to be doing, um, I'm going to be doing a, 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 um, a velociraptor in a bird cage, sitting like a bird, <laughs> and I don't know if I'm going to put it in game, wow, or something, but just like, you know, just imagining that it's like a proper bird and just sitting in a bird cage is a bit of a cheeky um, 
little, little cheeky middle finger to those people who, you know, going on and on about velociraptors had feathers. I'm like, fine, and here's your feathers. <laughs> but also, um, uh, and also, because, you know, um, I'm also going to have a velociraptor in a sort of a cantina feathered jacket suit. So it's going to be like a, it's going to be like a, a normal version, a normal, well, it's going to be like a Jurassic Park style um, Velociraptor. And also I'm going to be redoing this part because I was distracting myself with conversation. But I'm going to be doing a Velociraptor in the style of Jurassic Park, but wearing a feathered suit. <laughs> Uh, just, I don't know, just just thought it'd be a funny little um, satirical, satirical take on um, the whole dinosaurs and feathers argument. <laughs> yeah, so I will be doing a serious Velociraptor feathered, but I'm also going to be doing two cheeky Velociraptors, <laughs> just you know, maybe to maybe to make people a little bit angry. <laughs> trolling through art so i'm expecting with those particular videos the um the, the cartoon ones i'm gonna probably get a few dislikes but hey <sighs> people just need to learn to have a bit of a sense of humor sometimes and not get so up in arms about dinosaurs and the scientific accuracies i mean we've only just discovered really that dinosaurs had feathers and I'm only adjusting to the fact that they had feathers, and God, this video is now becoming quite long with ranting, so I'm just going to leave it there. Actually, I hope people like the, um, the Carnotaurus body that I just put up. It wasn't fully rendered, but I'm hoping people actually like it. Um, to be honest, I wasn't actually fully liking how this Allosaurus was going before I rendered it, but now that I have, I quite like it, so. I mean, I've commented in previous videos, and that, maybe even in, in this video, I can't fully remember, but I was saying how sometimes, you know, my drawings are good, sometimes I don't like them as much, and some of my drawings are, you know, no, it's okay, and some of them are, like, really good, and some of them are, like, fairly average. I thought that um, that kind of Taurus body that I did was okay. It wasn't my best, but it was okay. This Allosaurus started off as okay, but to be honest, now I'm actually, like, as you can see here, I'm putting in, like, you know, light, darker lines every now and then just to emphasize some of the creases and that. But um, getting back to my point is that um, now that this looks more detailed and advanced to my level that I like drawing in, now I can quite safely say that I do like how this dinosaur looks. I mean, it didn't look bad before, but it's more to my level of um, skill level. So I'm more, I'm more, I'm happier with the direction and the final result now. I'm just going to render these teeth. To make them look a little bit more three-dimensional. With tongues, the best way to render them, I find, is just doing lots of little circular lines like this. And I'm just kind of building up the shadow where you think, you know, the lighting that should go. So the tongues are usually darker underneath, so I'm doing the tongue darker underneath. And obviously I did like with the teeth there, some of the teeth there in the background, so they get a darker treatment. I think after I've drawn this one, I'm going to get back to my Velociraptors. Like, the one, not the ones I was just talking about, but the, um, the ones that I talked about at the very start of this video, the ones running with Chris Pratt. So I just decided to take a quick little break from drawing to, um, as you can tell, put a preview of my drawing up on the Instagram, B-E-A-N-A-R-T-S, B-N-A-R-T-S on Instagram, if you don't already follow me on there. But yes, 
got that out of the way. Now, let's finish off the neck, shall we? I may have already started drawing the neck a little bit, but, um, yeah. I just thought I'd do a little bit of a video bit thing for this. I'm going to be um, time-lapsing probably a lot of this. Because, you know, it's basically little scales. I know people have been going, you're going too fast, can you slow it down? But, um, this little bit isn't really intended to be a tutorial, it's just the last final process of me drawing the neck. You might be able to learn some things from it, but, um, basically, around here, around these, these, um, scales, you have your, a bunch of scales that surrounds these, um, sort of platish scales, and then you just kind of, I don't know, sort of bring out lines like that, but I mainly just kind of have them all over the place, yada yada yada, just random, casually, then the occasional line through that, and basically like that, it's not too intense, I mean, could be for some of you, but in the whole process of what am I doing in this time-lapse part, it's basically just that little lines and scales and then, you know, lines and scales and that's basically all you really need to know. Probably will also point out that I'm not going to do detail all the way down the neck. I'm, I'm probably going to finish up the detail to about this level. But I'm just going to gradually reduce the amount of detail, like, you know, around here, I'll just, like, minimize the detail. Just gradually fading it out a bit. So it kind of looks more like a portrait than a whole, you know, a whole dinosaur. You'll probably tell, you know, when it gets about this point that the detail just kind of cuts off, and that's basically the end of the dinosaur. Or the end of the drawing of this dinosaur, anyway, so... And I'm, and I'm also putting, you know, a few little heavier um, scales here and there, just, you know, wherever I feel like I need something a little bit different. But I think this video in this drawing is nearly done anyway. I wasn't going to put a huge amount of detail into the neck. I really have the neck in there just so it's not a floating head. Once I get to about this point in the neck, that's when I just kind of loose out the... The scales just kind of wiggly wiggly, just kind of the illusion of scales to the point where, you know, it's just like blah, 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 little bits and just fades out. I do rather like this head, how it turned out in the long run. I didn't quite like the drawing to begin with. I thought there were some problems up around there, but I think I fixed that up. There's also a huge gallery of videos now for you to watch if you want something else to watch between now and when I upload something again. And here's the final scanned result. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this one. Hopefully you learnt something about scales and how to do some skin textures. If you did, give it a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll have even more for you guys in the future, as you know from what I already mentioned previously in the video of some of my video plans. I've also got Ankylosaurus and a few other tutorials I'm going to be redoing. But until then, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.